What's good? <laughs> September 14th and first take is on the air. In mm. studio in Bristol, Skip Bayless, Lomas Brown, I'm Cindy Brunson, and of course Stephen A. Smith joins us from New York. Stephen A., go ahead. <laughs> I have nothing to say. I mean, listen. <laughs> well, you know, I have something let, to let, say. Let if you ahead. don't... Let, 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 let Skip, let Skip go ahead. Let Lomas Brown go ahead. <laughs> okay. I had all the talking yeah, you, you know yesterday. What? Okay. I, I'm I have just, nothing to say. I'm glad you're not here today so I don't have to look into your, your mug <laughs> while you're scowling at me and laughing at me like I know you're about to do. <laughs> well, let's see what makes you. Stephen A. I Smith tried to tell all you. smiles. <laughs> the Packers defense... I making... tried to tell him. All I... All I'm a friend. I'm a friend, Skip. I'm a friend, Lomas. I tried to look out for y'all. I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. Well, try was the key word for that offensive line in front of Jay Cutler last night because try as they might, they could not keep him upright. The Packers defense all over Cutler, held him to 126 yards passing, picking him off four times, sacking him seven times. Cutler visibly frustrated by the offensive performance. And, Skip, what did you learn about your Vanderbilt man mm -hmm. last night? Stephen A., I'm here to tell you that I learned that I now have serious doubts that my guy, Jay Cutler, will ever lead the Chicago Bears to the Super Bowl. And for those who, who aren't familiar with the background of this, maybe even including you, Stephen A., I started raving on this show when Jay Cutler was a junior at Vanderbilt University, which is my school, as Cindy points out, saying that one day he would be a Pro Bowl quarterback, and everybody laughed and laughed and laughed at me. And he was the 11th overall pick in the first round of the draft to Mike Shanahan, and he did make a Pro Bowl. But last night, I thought that at Lambeau Field on NFL Network National TV, Jay Cutler had a chance to take an elite step in his career, and instead, he gave us the second worst statistical game of his entire career. And what I'm here to tell you was the overall worst game of his entire career because I thought his four interceptions easily and maybe should have been six interceptions. I, I know he didn't get the greatest of protection last night, and he usually doesn't. But Stephen A., that wasn't all the offensive line's fault. That was Jay Cutler's fault. That was Jay Cutler getting more and more gun shy, holding the ball way too long, throwing way too many passes, falling away off his back foot. And it, you know what? It just got harder and harder to watch, Stephen A., because I am sick and tired of watching Jay Cutler then try to deflect blame in front of the national TV cameras by berating and showing up and upstaging his offensive lineman, starting with his new left tackle, Jamarcus Webb. And if you can please explain to me how Mike Tice, the new coordinator, along with Jay Cutler, couldn't get one pass to Brandon Marshall in the first half, their new big six-foot, five-inch weapon. You know way more about football than I do. Bottom line, that Bears team, in my humble opinion, was ready to take the next step last night. But that stage, once again, was too big for my guy, Jay Cutler. <sighs> <laughs> are you finished, Skip? Yeah, I'm finished. Are, now are, you are, start. Are, are, are you finished? Just go ahead, are, are laugh, finished? scoff. I don't are, care what you, you do. It, it is it, it is funny because it's amazing how you try to attach substance and credibility to your arguments when you're emotional. See, I always know when you're going to be wrong when you get emotional about particular T players. Time out. That's I was when not you're wrong. wrong. I picked That's when the you're Packers losing. last night because no, 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 of this. No, 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 I said finish. I didn't trust no, no, Cutler. No, no, I told no. you yesterday. Let me finish. Let me finish. You don't get to interrupt me now. Well, you when you mislead the public about my stance, I do. No, no, no. We, well, excuse me. You're on national television. Everybody knows you made your pick, but at the same time, even though you pick Green Bay, we know how you hedge your bets. You always do this. You mm -hmm. always sit there and you pick apart something. So in the event that it doesn't go the way you predicted, then you have a fallback argument. In this case, you don't. Because when it comes to Cutler, you have placed entirely too much faith in the Chicago Bears because of this dude. Oh, this dynamic duo that was going to be Cutler and Brandon Marshall. Mm -hmm. Wait till you see what they're going to do. Remember the season that Cutler passed for 4,500 yards to Denver Stevens? Who was he throwing the ball to? Brandon Marshall. You have no idea how this season's going to be. 
blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I sat there and I told you. I said, Green Bay's defense has got to show up. They have been putrid. They have been pathetic. They were worthy because they were the worst team in terms of yards allowed in defense last year. All year long, they were horrid. But they showed up last night. Clay Matthews looked like the second coming of Lawrence Taylor out there last night. He was absolutely sensational. Charles Woodson, Traymond Williams, and the rest of the crew, they were flat out balling. Yes, they were covering Brandon Marshall. There were a couple of times when a Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey was open, but that was few and far between. They were all over. They were breathing down Jay Cutler's neck. The receivers were not getting open. They were held in check. And as a result, it demoralized Jay Cutler. It is one thing for him to have a bad game. It is another thing entirely to come across as so demoralized right. that you know what? His psyche is just gone. And that is what everybody has been saying. Charles Woodson told our Rachel Nichols after the game, <clears throat> it's Jay. We knew Jay would throw us the ball. Same so old Jay. All the toys that you have. Yep. Same old Jay. We knew he'd throw the ball. And that's the point that I was making to you. I know Chicago's defense is tough. I know that even though Lovey Smith is underachieved in terms of getting the team to the postseason, he can coach. I also know that Forte can run the football. By the way, he should have been running more even though he got hurt in the third quarter. He should have been running the football more. He should have gave it to him more, okay? You should have gave it to their running backs more because they averaged about four yards a carry. But they didn't do that. They wanted to throw the ball because they believed that they ride with Cutler. You believe. They rode with Cutler. And I'm telling you, at some, at some point in time, any dude that can sit on the sidelines in an NFC championship game riding a bicycle but telling you he can't drop back to pass with a Super Bowl on the line, there is an indication there that is something is missing when it comes to this dude. And it showed up last night, and that's why they got beat down. It's simple. <laughs> I told you. Yeah. I tried to tell yeah, you. Let, let's yeah, let's let Stephen Lola. A., I'm telling you, what I learned from him is his character is fragile. He has a very fag fragile char character. And to me, the way he attacked that offensive lineman, it's one thing to be yelled at and, and, and scalded. But for him to come up and push this guy, actually push this Chest guy, bump. you know, it, it was ridiculous. And then you turn around with his double standards, you turn around and then he pats Brandon Marshall on the head when he drops a touchdown pass. I don't understand this guy. I think he has a very, very fragile uh, uh, personality. I think it, it, it's bad for the Chicago Bears because you can look at his body language, man. You, your quarterback is the one person you don't want to see st st sitting on the sideline, moping, walking with his head down, getting up in everybody's face. If anybody needs to stay encouraged, it's got to be your quarterback. And when he starts showing how fragile he is, then what do you think the rest of the team is going to do? And that's what happened to the Bears. And the other thing I do, I blame Mike Tice a lot, too, because Skip is right. Man, and you are right. You you got to be able to use screens, draw plays. You can't expect him to drop back five yards, seven yards, and throw the ball when he don't know how the protection is going to be. They were wretched last year on the offensive line with their protection. They haven't gotten any better, and their play calling. To me, you help your quarterback, you help your offense with your play calling. Mike Tice didn't do that last night. He just didn't help them out at all. And here's the hey, point. Skip, I, yeah. I, I, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Skip. To, to Lomas. How much would you want to block for this man after a while? How much would you want to protect him when you know he's a smart guy who knows where the TV cameras are and he knows that if he shows you up, that some easily duped out in, in fan land will say, Oh, oh wait, skip. he's not getting protected here. It's the offensive yeah. line's fault. No, it's not. Right. I'm sorry. Hold on, Skip. But, but you're wrong here. Yes, he was not getting protected. There's no doubt about that. There were times when he was getting protected and holding on to the ball for far too long. There were times that it was his fault. But you're thinking that he's that calculating. He's not that calculating. Yes, he's smart, but he's not that calculating. It's not a matter of knowing where the TV cameras are and all of a sudden I'm going to conduct myself this way because I want the world to see. No, Skip. He's emotionally fragile. Yep. His uh, psyche, psych psychologically, well, he is fragile. But, but the Stephen minute A's. adversity, the minute adversity kicks in, 
He can't handle it, but, and he's in shot town. But he he's know who to pick on, to Stephen A. That. He know who to pick on. He didn't go over to Brandon Marshall, you know, because he know what he would have got from Brandon Marshall. He going to go to his young tackle, knowing the guy's struggling, but it's not just his fault he was struggling. Like I say, the offensive coordinator, Mike Tice, they didn't help that young man. Now, this easy. It's a lot of ways you could, you could chip. You could line a tight end up, which I've seen them do maybe two or three times. I tell you what, if that would have been Jay Cutler and he would have came up and bumped me, y'all would have been talking about the fight yep. me and them had on that sideline. That would have laid off, I, laid off the you. A block. I'm with you on that. And i got to make one point. Again, calculating, you, you can explain it any way you want to, Stephen A., but it was calculated that he went over to Brandon Marshall on the bench and patted him on the head because that also sends the message to the public, it was your fault. I think that pass, and I don't know if we, can we show it real quick to Brandon Marshall? I thought it wasn't a great pass. It was too high, and especially to a receiver who hadn't touched the ball for a whole half of the game to expect him to make what I think would have been a very good to great catch on that play in the, in the end zone. That, I, I'm not going to expect that. Look, th this, this throw is high. If he drops it in his bread basket, it's an easy six points. But that was as much Cutler's fault as it was Brandon Marshall. But he wants the world to know, oh, it's okay. We know you screwed up, Brandon. I, I, I'm done skip. with it, man. I'm sorry. Skip, skip. No, no. Yes. Brandon Marshall. <laughs> I, listen, it's not all his fault. It's just one game. He's a stud. He's well, got to make that catch. All right, well, here's He's got to make that here's catch. Here's what kid. we do know, if he makes that catch or not. Jay Cutler was on the ground a lot. He has been sacked now 84 times, which is the most in the NFL since arriving in Chicago. And we will see these two teams go head-to-head -head again in Week 15 at Chicago. That's December 16th. Now, before this game, Stephen A., before the big Packers victory, there was a little nervousness in Packer Nation. No, in Stephen A. Nation. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about the Pack now that they're 1-1 one and one on the season? Well, listen, uh, Skip, once again, is being accurate, erroneous, and misleading. The fact of the matter is, is that I'm on the record on national television, sitting right across from him, himself, and I said, even if they were to lose this game, it's still no need for panic. It's 0-2. It's a 16-game season. They're a high-powered offense. They'll be fine. On you a understand? scale of and 1 to 10, that, then? On a scale of 1 to well, 10, then, how mean? much did the Packers regain your trust? me regain my trust i mean listen their offense i have complete trust in their defense showed up last night it's the first time i've seen them in a year it was nice to see him i especially applaud mccarthy saying that he wants his defense to be known for playing the way they play they play defense the way they played last night nobody's beating the packers they'll win the super bowl again which is one of the reasons why i picked them to win the super bowl these dudes are legit but the point that i'm trying to make to you is that I'm not worried at all. On a scale of one to ten, in terms of worry, please, in terms of the faith, the faith that I have in them, it's right where it was before. I picked them to win the Super Bowl. I still believe they're going to win the Super Bowl. All I'm telling y'all, so, it's very, very simple. Go ahead. You're, Go you're, ahead, you're still a 10 on your trust scale because you weren't a 10 before yesterday, before last night. I was Exactly, exactly. I wasn't a 10. I, whatever I was the other day. The last night what was were you the other no day? difference Six? to me whatsoever. No, it was more like an eight because their well, defense, I wasn't high on their defense. Okay. I wasn't, well, listen, I'm trying, y'all interrupted me three, four people <laughs> keep in my ear. Let me speak. You understand? I mean, you know, I'm not at a distance. Well, then All say I'm trying something. to say to you, their defense is suspect. It played better last night, but I'm the type of dude, I don't get rattled by one game. Even if they had lost last night, I would not have been phased. That they won, I'm proud to see their defense the way that it was, but I still need them to do it more consistently. But offensively, not really worried about these boys. I wasn't worried about them before. I'm not worried about them okay. now. You, on the other hand, Skip, was very worried. Yeah, here's the point. Your trust factor right now on a 1 to 10 scale should be no higher than a 3. What happened last night was the Bears blew that game far more than your offense wanted. If you're going to take this as offensive domination, I'm going to flat out laugh at you today because that game very well could have been three to nothing visiting team going to the fourth quarter. Remember the first field goal that Green Bay got? 
It came courtesy of Aaron Rodgers talking the refs out of a 12 men on the field penalty. That's the only way you got your field Don't goal. Hate. Then Don't the first, hate, the first, wait, a, let me finish. The, the, your first touchdown came courtesy of a trick play off a field goal. That is desperation. That's not Aaron Rodgers bombs away to, to one of his wideouts. And then your next field goal at the end of the half comes courtesy of Lance Briggs dropping an A-Rodge interception that hit him right in the 5-5, five -five, right? So we go to the third quarter. The Bears won it three to nothing. The Bears could have led three to nothing going to the fourth quarter. Then who broke the game open? A 54-yard field goal. Then Cutler threw his worst interception of the night, which finally led to a fast break, quick touchdown pass from Aaron Rodgers. Are you going to call that domination? Because it ain't, Stephen A. You should still be worried. I, I, I never, the word domination never came out of my mouth. When I'm talking about Green Bay's offense and dominance, I'm talking about what they've done over the last couple of years and what I expect them to do this season. I'm not talking about what transpired last night. You're going to have games when you only score 14, 16, or in this case, 23 points. You're going to have games when your offense is not elite. But for the most part, if you have a high-powered offense, it will show up most weekends in an NFL. That is what I expect from the Green Bay Packers. I didn't sit there and tell you that Green Bay was going to drop 50. I told you they were going to win. You said and drop primarily 30. Because Cutler, <laughs> and, and, and primarily because Cutler would find a way to lose. That's what I told you. And I was on the money with that because <laughs> that's exactly what happened. So deal with that, Skip. Just but, deal with it. Well, I'll tell you real fast, what, what encouraged me, I thought they had to be a more balanced team before that game. They came out, they ran the ball good. I'm talking about Green mm -hmm. Bay, and they passed it good. That's encouraging to me that they're getting back to having balance on their offense. And to Stephen A's point, it was a career-high three-and-a-half sacks for Clay Matthews, so mm -hmm. that defense really did step up as the Packers were able to beat the Bears for a fifth straight time at Lambeau Field. Ahead on first take, Plexico Burris is in the house. We are talking about the Steelers and the Jets and what Plex uh -oh. expects. That's now next. we're official. This is how you first doing? take. How you doing? Make it a good. Boy. Hey, how are you? Good. Welcome, good. welcome, welcome. Good. You're looking good. Good. I shall not, not be moved. I shall not be moved. Uh, come on. Introducing Tropical Island Grill only at Golden Corral. This is island cooking at its best. It's breaded Cozumel Island shrimp, Fiji lemon pepper tilapia, and much more. It's all part of our endless dinner buffet, still for one low price, and it's only at Golden Corral. We got room for Katie. The little blind, big blind game is Texas Hold'em. It's the new Ruffles Ultimate. Mm. 